What did you What did you start? I started off in, in uh, basic training Camp Perry, Virginia, which is now the CIA uh, area. Then I went to Fort Wayne, California, and after three or four months, we went went to Hawaii, and then uh, to Tinian, uh, Tinian uh, in the Mariana Islands, and then Okinawa, which is like 300 miles from. Yeah. We used to have in our radio said a stone's throw from Tokyo. That's the last bombing area for before Japan attacked. Our our gear was packed ready for the invasion of Japan, and that's why I bless Harry Truman. I know people were innocent, people were lost, but a lot more people would have been lost if they didn't drop the bomb, because yeah. many more Americans and, and Japanese would have been killed. Now, what time, what type of, uh, now, were you, in, were you drafted or uh, did you enlist? I enlisted, but I had, at that time when I enlisted, I had to go through my draft board. But basically, I went down to enlist and they said, we have to put you through the draft because they wanted to get the quotas from uh, New Britain through the, uh, by drafting. But I, I, I right after I graduated high school, I went down and enlisted. Uh, what year was that? In 43. And you said you were? And I, went in, I, I graduated in June of 43, and I, they took me in November of 43. And we were all, I went down with one of my good friends uh, for the exam. He got into the Marines and I got into Navy. And we both were very, very happy. And unfortunately, he got killed in Iwo Jima. And you said you were living at, in um, New Britain yes. at the time? Yes. And why, why did you decide to join? Well, we couldn't wait to join because we knew uh, that America was attacked by Japan and the Germans were very bad and uh, it was a patriotic thing to do. We all, I think 90% of the, of the young people wanted to serve. I think there's very few, and, and we never thought that, you know, we almost was afraid that we might be rejected. I mean, when I got, when I got out of there and said, you, you, you passed the exam, I, I, like I won the lottery and I was so happy. My poor parents, they weren't happy. In fact, they said they would take me because I, I had hay fever, I had eczema, I got flat feet, but and I, it was not a problem. I was I was good enough to go, yeah, and very happy about it. Your parents weren't as weren't as excited. No, no they weren't so happy. About it. No. And why did you pick the uh, branch that you that you joined? I don't know. I was always a kid. I you know, I loved the Navy. Anchors away. It's a good song. I like the uniform. Yeah. Bobbly, um, I always wanted to be preferred the Navy. And but, you like you but, like the ocean and stuff, and the water. You're right, but uh, as strange as it may seem, I I ended up being a CB, which is still part of the Navy. But basically, I was on land. Although I worked on ships every day, but I was basically on land. I mean, I I slept on land. I didn't slip on ships. Now, do you recall your first days in service? Yes, the first days were. I would describe us to me and my good friend who I still in contact with in New Jersey. In fact, we reminiscent about it not too long ago, how we were so homesick and how we were constipated and, and, and lonesome and we thought it, it was the end of the world. We were, we were not happy. We were not happy sailors. Uh, how, how come? It was just a change from being at home to... Uh, well, it's a total, a total change. I mean, here, here we are. Uh, you know, you live in a home with your 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 parents. Your you you have your your friends and neighbor, and all of a sudden, boom! You're 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 in a quanta that with ninety strange uh, people from all over the country. We had people from from Oklahoma to Arizona to uh, Alabama. We were we were really a mix of from all over the country. And uh, I get friendly with this fellow from New Jersey, and in fact, today we're still friends. And uh, uh, it was. Cold that night, damp. Williamsburg, Virginia, which is a beautiful city to see historical events, but it wasn't a great place to have basic training. Of course, basic training they keep you, they get you up early and they send you to bed late, and and uh, so you don't have time to really think about much. Of it. So, 
So you want to tell me a little bit more about your boot camp and your training experiences? Well, just as I said, it was, uh, they got us up early where the, after the first day we thought we were veterans, we were singing songs to the new people who were coming in uh, and all kinds of little ditty songs we sang. And we, or somebody, somebody new came, we called them Barbara Bray because they always got, had to get short haircuts. Yeah. And we uh, had to get up early, we had, everything had to be clean, everything had to be shiny. Everything had to be, uh, we always had, to be, always had to be at attention. We had to uh, wash our own clothes. Uh, we were kept very busy and then we went, went, went out for, to shooting. I never shot a gun before. And we had those big old Springfield uh, rifles. When I first time I shot, I thought it was gonna shoot me. It, did, it had the recall, knocked me back, hurt my shoulder, luckily, when we got uh, advanced training, we got carbines, which were a lot easier to handle. Yeah. Do you remember any of your instructors at all? Uh, the instructors. I just remember my 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 chiefs and my, my not so much in in boot camp, but as they, when we got uh, got into our twenty seventh special, the chief was from uh, he was a redneck from Mississippi. And not 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 very uh, friendly, and uh, the chief was a uh, regular Navy fellow who, uh, not no, that's the CEO. He was a regular Navy fellow who uh, got promoted way up to uh, to uh, you know a, an officer, and he was he was nasty too. I mean, well, well, for an example, when we had a, we worked twenty four seven unloading ships, if we had a, a day in between the ships. We didn't have we didn't have the day off to sit in a bus. He made us garden the area, you know, plant flowers. Oh, never, never. But maybe it was good to the idea that you didn't have time to think of what am I doing here, you know. Maybe the final uh, Anna, the idea was was a good idea to keep constantly busy. But I don't know. Now, how did you get through all that? You know, the training, the being away from home and stuff. I sort of got used to it after a while, you know, you know, you, you got, you, 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 we had our circle of friends that I had like one friend from Oklahoma, one from, from Alabama, who I'm going to see this, this next week, I went, one from New Jersey, uh, they were probably my closest friends, and I know there was a couple from New Jersey, and I said, nobody from Connecticut, a few from California, you know, uh, you, you got your friends and they were, they were, they were like your, your, your brothers, I mean, we, at night, we tap something. When we go to bed, we, we we talk about our mother's cooking, and then we go go to the midnight shower, which get food cup. But we couldn't get our mother's cooking. I talk about my mother's cooking. He talk about his mother's cooking. But we we end up with food cups. We, we food the food. Actually, the Navy food wasn't bad compared to the Army food. Yeah. In, in fact, you know, in Okinawa, uh, the Air Force pilots used to come to our enlisted men's mess in the sea because we had better food because. The food that came ashore had to go through us. We, the sure, all, all, all the food that came ashore had to go through our, so you guys had first, first pitch of the, uh, the it was uh, called procurement. It was, it wasn't right. stealing. Well, we'll talk more about that. Uh, later uh, on uh, okay. Interview. Okay. Um, again, you served in WW two, but where exactly did you go? Like I said, Virginia. Yeah. Port Wyneme, California, which is yeah. where you disembark. And then we went, it took us 30 days to, to get from uh, Wainimi to the island of Oahu. Where we were at Barber's Point, which was right near Pearl Harbor. Yeah. In fact, uh, we had a terrible thing happen there. One Sunday we were in our sacks and we had a big explosion and they called for volunteers to go down to, to uh, Pearl Harbor. There was an explosion and I volunteered with a bunch of other fellows and, when we, by the time we got there, they didn't want any more volunteers. Like some ammunition blew up on a ship, and huh. I think like 40, 50 fellows were killed. They never, they ne I never saw anything in the newspaper about it, but uh, but I'm sure somewhere it might be on the record. On one of our ships? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was not a, no enemy attack. It was just kind of. Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, do you remember arriving to your location and what, what it was like? Well, it was the same, it was, it was Quantum Huts. They, one place was just like the next. They all were, oh, although then once after we left Hawaii, we got to Tinian, we had uh, 
tent. There's a tent city. Uh, I can give you, I'll show you a picture of the tent city. Uh, we lived in tents. It's because they were already now in the war zones and they didn't have things permanent there. But they, they had, we had we had a lot of tents, but you know there were a tent like five, five or six fellows in a tent. Yeah. We didn't have to worry about cold because it was it was uh, the climate was quite quite warm where we were. Tropical, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's tropical. It it it, it, it was it it wasn't oh it wasn't you know unbearably hot, right. but but it, it but it, you know during the day it was warm. Did it get humid at all, or was it just? I don't remember so much humidity. I don't remember so much humidity at all. I really don't remember the humidity. Remember working hard, but I don't remember. You know, being we used to get tired, yeah. and we slept good. We didn't have the our leisure was drinking beer. <laughs> uh, there was no uh, there was no female companions. Uh, of course, we're here. Here in Hawaii, there's a, there's a picture of me with a girl, but you take uh, 50 cents or something to take a picture with her. And uh, that, that's a, because, uh, uh, well, they did have prostitution, but I didn't partake in it. And here's a picture of the uh, way the tents, we live in tents. Yeah. So you'd have six, to, six guys? Yeah, to a tent. Yeah. Tent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, you want to tell me a little bit more about your job assignment? Um, while you were over there. My assignment was to, in the beginning I was assigned to be, well first I tried out to be, uh, they, they uh, gave tryouts to, for what, it, what which they felt you could be good at. So I tried out for the, I was a high school graduate, so another fellow, local on me, we, we tried out for the office. We were high school graduates and two other fellows tried out for the, right. for the office. One was a lawyer and one was a, a CPA. Guess when who got they, the, yeah, so they were drafted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guess who got the job in the office? Of course, those two guys, which, 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 which it should be. I mean, because yeah. we, we also had a fellow who was at his uh, MBA in library studies. He ended up working in the law. I mean, he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have had that job. Yeah. But anyhow, so so then uh, after we tried out for that job, then we couldn't. Then I, we the the, the losers ended up starting off on KP. And then we were, then we, then we became. Uh, uh, I want, I want to be a, ch uh, a checker to check the cargo coming on or off the ship. The unions in Hawaii said we couldn't do that, so I ended up going into the hold of the ship and becoming a stevedore laborer. And 135 pounds, I wasn't too strong, but by by the time I I was through, I had I had muscles yeah. that I didn't know I had. This is the picture you saw, right? Okay. Now, did you see combat? Well, I don't know what you want to call combat. Where so I, I had, I heard bombs dropping and, and explosions. I, I've seen uh, uh, kamikazes uh, going by me, but I actually never, never was on hand-to-hand -hand combat. I never, I never saw the enemy in the eyes. We had guard duties uh, every once in a while, but when I was on guard duty, I never had a problem. But a couple guys had. There's, you know, even though we secured the island of Tinian, there were still a lot of strays there. In fact, even years after the war, there were strays. And uh, one, one, every once in a while, we hear somebody get shot. Uh, uh, not, not so much our guys, but, but, but the enemy. Uh, I don't know if they were Japanese or they were Korea. Or I, I don't know, but uh, but that. But I never, I never, yeah, I never got hand-to-hand -hand combat. Thank, thank God for that. And. I seen. I, I've lost friends who were. In fact, one of the nicest guys. He had. He was a family man from Mississippi. And he was such a sweetheart of a good guy. He got. He got killed. Uh, on, he was on. On. A, he was on the shift uh, during the day. I, I was at night, and he had the day shift. And the kamikaze came and hit part of the, the boat, and him and four other guys got killed. I mean, I didn't. I didn't know the other guys as well, but him, I knew quite well. It's very, very sad. Very sad. Were there any casualties within your unit? Yes, we. Like I told you, I would say, I'd say maybe eight, ten, eight to ten. I actually should check check that out. I'm gonna go see if I can go in the archives and find out. 
I know, I know that one, I know that two or three were for sure. Can you tell me about some of your most memorable experiences while, uh, while over there? Right. You, well, actually one of the most frightening things we had was right after the war ended, it was in September, they had a typhoon, which the winds were 175 to 190 miles an hour, where it destroyed all the Quonset huts, it destroyed many ships, many ships went to go out to sea, didn't get out there, and, and, and uh, for days after, after that, there was bodies floating all over the place. It was, it was terrible. That was in 40, uh, the war ended in 45, it was September of 45. The typhoon of 45, I'm sure there must be records of that somewhere. It, 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 was, yeah. it, it was terrible. It was, it was frightening. It was the corrugated, the corrugated sheets from the Quantas were going, you know, and if it hit you, it would, it would cut you right in half. I mean, you know, and luckily, a couple of friends, we, we ended up in, in a, we called the head, it was, uh, which was made of wood, and that for some reason stayed there. They were all outhouses, basically. But some of the outhouses, the top flew off, and a couple of guys, as they run, they fell into the, into the, the hole. hole. And, and, but they to live. It, it, it was excuse me, because it was a shitty shelter, but they they survived. <laughs> but but uh, I, I mean we we la we laughed at them, but but they were they, they didn't complain. They, they I mean uh, they they were alive because we go I don't know how many people we lost that that there anyhow. That was probably one of the most frightening, and the kamikazes were were scary too. Yeah, but if you weren't on duty, you, you didn't see the kamikazes. But but you 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 are, and then every, every once in a while we we get, we get an air raid, and we we went we went to we were sort of blasé about it. we we simply built foxholes outside outside the tents. We had foxhole sandbags, yeah. and we used to sit outside in front. But every once in a while we hear boom. Then we jumped in, and of course, if it was closer, it would have been too late. But but they hit an ammunition dump like five miles away, and we had fireworks going on forever. And one of the most dangerous day was the day that they announced the war was over. We they were shooting guns off all over the outer. And and uh, after yeah, the yeah, yeah no we were oh, we won we won the war celebrating, yeah. and some of the shrapnel stuff killed killed the, some of the, some of the guys. Yeah, yeah yep. Wow. Um, now, were you awarded any medals? Uh, I, I got, I got, I got, told you, I got the battle star for Okinawa and the, the Pacific ribbon, you know, yeah. the basic, the uh, American ribbon, the good conduct, whatever ribbons they gave out. Wow, this is a great picture. Of the tents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, how many months did you guys spend in the in the tent? Well, we lived there from uh, we lived there from when did we when we in Okinawa because we just had temporary tents when we first got there because because there there's a lot of fighting going on. Uh, uh, I don't know three four months uh, we, we, we in in in, uh, in in Hawaii we lived in in the Quonset hut in Tinian. We had we had the tents too. I mean, I know that's right because our our tent was right near the mess hall. Yeah, we we were tent, we were tents most of the time. They were they were, they were good sized tents. Yeah. I mean, like I said, five guys in 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 the we had all those spots there. Was, there was room. I mean, when we had a uh, you know we had our we didn't have uh, lockers or anything. We had our uh, our duffel bags, our bags. Yeah. And one of the most scariest things to do in the beginning, in order to in advanced training, we had to have our back pack, which was maybe 25, 30 pounds. I don't know, it was heavy. Yeah. I weighed 130 pounds, and I had to climb a cargo net up to onto the ship, and that was very frightening. But, but that time, I was we were, we, when we came alongside. What we did, we came on this small uh, L LCTs, and we there was a cargo net, which is a big net. We just grab on and go up like monkeys after we, because we, the yeah. first, usually the first couple of guys on board just get fresh eggs at, from, from the merchant marines. We're oh, not always, but the first guys on board, so everybody grabbed to want to be the first guys on board to hopefully to get uh, fresh eggs, because we got powdered eggs. 
and, and the Marine, the Merchant Marine had, had fresh stuff. One of the funniest issues, the Merchant Marine used to sell some of our guys who were big alcoholic drinkers whiskey. They paid $35 for a bottle of Canadian Club, and that's like, that's a, that, that, that's a half, half a month's pay, okay? Yeah. So these two fellows from North Carolina, they bought, they bought, they, they bought the, the fifth of uh, Canadian Club, and one guy would go down to the boat, and then he, the other fellow would tie it on a rope and send it down. Right. So at this time, he said, send down the baby as he went to tie it up. Bottle fell and broke. He says, the baby just died. <laughs> it was sad, but funny. Thirty-five dollars was a lot, of that. and we made we made seventy dollars a month. Of course, the Merchant Marine guys they were getting a hundred dollars a day because they were in the war zone. They had, you know, we were on top. Well, they were they were they, they were civilians, okay. but but they they're in the war zone. They got uh, at having ammunition, you know, the bombs. Right. I mean, like we ended we unloaded everything, either bombs or or hats or shirts or blankets. Whatever came to the island, we got, we, we, we got loaded. Wow. Now, how did you stay in touch with your family? When I, they, at that time, we had something called Vmail. Yeah. And uh, I'd write, and, but I, when, after I came home, I found out a lot of the stuff was censored, censored which things that I, did, I didn't, didn't uh, you know, uh, think was that, I, we tried to stay on the, Narrow, but a lot, of, a lot of the letters were there was big blanks in between. Did they put like red ink on it? Yeah, they got they just black it out. Wow. Now we could talk a little more about the food. Now you said it was really good. You said the guys. Kinda I would say I wouldn't use the real real good. Comparison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, the Navy did have better food in the Army. We had we had good uh, good bread. Yeah. If it wasn't uh, sometimes the bread had. Had raisins, but they weren't raisins. They were weevils or something, you know, some kind of animal that was uh, <laughs> a bug in it. Yeah, but uh, you know, basically the food was okay. Yeah. As long as it wasn't on the shingle, that's okay. And there's certain things I just couldn't couldn't take. And you guys had okay cooks and stuff. I think so. Yeah. Adequate. Yeah. It wasn't mother's cooking. It wasn't. It wasn't the uh, Max on Main. <laughs> right. Now, did you guys have obviously you had plenty of supplies? You yeah. Right on. And we had and, and we had good friendship too. Right? We were very very friendly. Uh, that's all we had. I mean, we had, we had each other. Yeah. So that's why even to this day, I mean, these two two of my uh, friends, one one friend, unfortunately, he came from Oklahoma. He he passed on helping us. His son delivered newspapers many years ago, and I'm in contact with his wife, who we married, and, and some of his children. I still have in contact with them because I, he was like family to me. And uh, and my friend from uh, Jersey and, and Alabama, we remember we, we used to 24/7. Yeah. I mean, you're not with your parents 24/7. You're your or your 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 best friends. I mean, your best friends. You you don't work with all of your best friends. We, we we got up in the morning. We went to work together. We we we, we play, uh, We had when we do had liberty. We, we played together and 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 we did everything together. There was you know there's a period of a year of time where we were just it was just us. There was no nobody else. There was no liberty. I mean the liberty. There was no uh, great liberties or anything like that. Especially since that was your first time out of yeah. We 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 all, we became very very close. Um, now, did you feel any uh, pressure or stresses for more or being away? You know, the only stress I felt was you know the tension I felt when when I, when there was uh, when the kamikazes were were in, in play when uh, when we heard some shooting every once in a while. But I really wasn't. I never really was worried that I said, "Yeah, I'm not going to make it." Although my, my good friend, who I just talked to recently, or both, we both turned 85. He said, "Well, Fred, we don't have much time left. So you know, we're 85." I said, "Sure, thank you for telling me that. I remember you telling me when we're 18, we're not going to live till we're 20." So, look, I, <laughs> so I guess I got that. I got to get that 60 years to go, George. <laughs>
George Glasson. Was there something you guys did uh, to, that was special for good luck at all? When he's had his good luck charms or anything? Good luck charms, rituals. No, I don't think so. We can do, we can do that. Let me show this picture here of the plane. We, we, what I did was exciting one time. I, see, we, we were at Tinian, and that was the biggest uh, base of bombing. They'd go to Japan, practically, every night. And it was like a highway in the sky. When they came back from Japan, you could see them circling around and the planes that had problems always landed first. Sometimes some of them crashed. But uh, it was a highway in the sky. And, and they used to go for test flights. And we got lucky and left to be, go on a test flight. I think that was very one of the most exciting things I did. And there's a picture of the plane. They, they named the plane after our outfit. Uh, so each, you know how each airplane has a name? Yeah. Like the, the yeah, 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 the one, the one that, oh, here, See, here's one with the CBs, with the bombs, that, that was, oh, yeah. our, that was our, our insignia, 20, 27th special. Nice. And you got to go for a ride on Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was yeah. that fun? Did you enjoy Oh, yeah, I was in the, where the gunners were, and, and we flew over, we didn't go to, we just went from uh, Tinian to Guam and Saipan, and back there, we were just testing the engines. Yeah. But that was the big plane of those days. Yeah. yeah. What does it say? In the, what does it say in the front there? The front of the twenty-seven um, president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delivers the goods. Delivers the goods. Yeah, that's self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't see it without my glasses. I'm sure you guys. Yeah, they got yeah. Sure. Well, that's the, but that's our emblem. Yeah. Now, how did you guys uh, entertain yourselves over there? Were there um, shows? They had movies. Movies. And once in a blue moon, we got to, you know, Bob Hope. Well, we saw Bob Hope in Hawaii. We saw, uh, who else did we see? Uh, I thought the one big one I think was Bob Hope. Because and the, we saw movies. Okay. Once we got what's, what, what, I don't know. Uh, he was wonderful. We, we yeah. were excited. He was in, in, uh, in, in Hawaii. And, I, you know, I told my wife that was at, you know, at, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, which was the only, that was the only hotel uh, on the beach. Right. There was another one, the breakers further up. So that's where Bob Hope entertained the, the troops. And I went back with my wife years later, and the Royal Hawaiian Hotel is just, just had a little grounds, and they built hotels all over the place. So you couldn't, you couldn't get Bob Hope to entertain 20 people on the lawn anymore. It just, yeah. it just disappeared with the lawn. What did you do uh, when you were on leave? Well, when I would leave first, uh, I didn't get many leaves. We got, first leave, I, I got when I uh, finished boot camp, and I was home for 10 days, and saw my family and friends, and then we went to California. California, we had good liberty. We used to take a, uh, we used to take a uh, bus down to L.A., and they, they had, uh, a great USO there is. We went to uh, different shows. I went to Frank Sinatra's show, uh, Frank Sinatra's show, uh, Benny, Benny uh, no, Jack Benny show. They were at that time where they were radio shows, and uh, Earl Carroll's was like uh, that was like the uh, they were dancing girls. Uh, they, they, we saw that show. We saw different shows, and, and then we had quite. They were recording it, and you yeah, 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 it was, yeah, it was for the radio. Yeah, I think it might have been live on radio. I've already recorded. I couldn't tell, but I, I remember I was. Uh, the people had tickets, got in first, and then they said the serviceman, and then I was the first sailor. He said, "Hey, Frank Sinatra said to me, hey, sailor, come down here and sit in no man's land because there all the girls were sitting down front, oh, yeah. so I sat down there, and we, you know, we we met girls. I met girls in." From some nice girls from California, and then uh, Hawaii. There was nothing. The only, only thing is, one girl had to go for the prostitution there, but, <laughs> and there was a lot of them there. And uh, and the other islands, there was nothing. There was nothing in Okinawa and Tinian. They had just the native girls, and and I, no one. At least I, I wasn't interested in anything like that. So I made up for it when I came back. And that's it.
Now, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events that, that happened in your career or throughout your uh, military career? Let me think. I really can't think of anything right now. Were there any pranks that you guys employed? Oh, yeah. In fact, when one of my one of my best friends, even it was, it was in boot camp too. Yeah, they they uh, they they gave him what they call a hot foot. He had his shoes on, and he put a match in 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 his shoe while he was sleeping, and then lit another match, and it, it, it burns down, and it, it's it's a killer. He jumped, and of course everybody laughed and screamed. But he was hurting, and he was angry with me. Why didn't I? Why didn't I wake him up? Why didn't I tell him? He he was angry with me. Yeah. In fact, to this day, he still, every once in a while, he reminds me about that. So you weren't nice, he said. Mm-hmm. Now, you said he developed a good relationship oh. with your fellow soldiers and you know, guys. Yeah, you sailors. Yeah. Yeah. sailors and, yeah. uh, oh, yes. Now, what did you think of the officers? Most of them were not nice. No. They were, they were too pompous. They thought they were, they knew everything and weren't, they weren't, they weren't nice. You see, here's the kind of equipment we used to load too. Yeah, no, no, uh, yeah. Anything that came off the ship, that's that's we took it off. Now, what kind of system of pulleys are not? It, 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 it's wenches. It's, it's it's from it's from it's from the the ship. The ship has those. That was retrofitted on. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're, they're all on the ship. Those are cargo ships. Maybe some of them were, were made cargo ships. I don't know, but that's that's what cargo ships do. So those things were pretty powerful back then. So and a lot of power. oh, I know, because these things were heavy. Oh. See, these are the bulldozers they bought. Now, did, did you keep a personal diary when you were over there? No. My personal thing I kept personal was writing letters to my folks. I got some letters somewhere, but I couldn't find them. The only one I found was that New Year's card. But I know, I know, I I, I still write them quite often. In fact, after the typhoon, which we were up for like 36 hours, I wrote to them. I thought I wrote to them, but they only got a blank letter. The war was over, so the news of the typhoon came back to, to Connecticut. So she was there. My parents were worried, worried about me. And, uh, but they knew that it was dated after the typhoon, so they knew I was all right. But the, I, I didn't put the letter in there. I just probably was so exhausted and so tired. Yeah. I thought I wrote, but I didn't. Now... Do you recall the uh, the day your service ended? Oh yeah, it was April second, nineteen forty six, in Lido Beach, New York. I had a few little problems. I I got hit uh, uh, with some falling dunnage on on the ship, and I had a little uh, hole in here. And I, the guy said, "Well, you want to put in for uh, you know uh, not work for this company, a, a disability." I said, no, I just want to get out. I want to go home. Yeah. And, I, and I went home. And it was a very happy day. And everybody was happy. I was happy. What did you do the, uh, the days and the weeks afterwards? Uh, I tried to get a job. I was ready to go to college. So uh, I tried to get a job for the summer, but I really had really a tough time getting it. And they had what they called a 5220 club, which, you know, for 52 weeks, you can get $20 a week, but uh, I got it for like six or seven weeks, and they wanted me to go work in a quarry, which I had. I had my hay fever and asthma. I refused that, so they, they wouldn't give me any more money anymore. And but I just then in, in September, I went. I started at uh, Central. Okay. I went to Central for two years for that. September of 46. Yeah. So you so you went to Central for for two years, then I went to. Uh, Bryant in, in Providence. Yeah. I uh, originally wanted to go to Indiana, but uh, after being away from home close to three years, I decided to hang around hang around the neighborhood for a couple of years. What did you uh, major in? Uh, in business, yeah. In business? I had one of the best accounting professors there. He ended up the head of the department, Mr. Boynton. I had a very good teacher, uh, uh, Dr. Martin. She was brilliant, but she... She always had shortcuts to get to the bottom line, and she made it difficult, but, but she was very nice. 
Professor Boyd, he, he was a great guy. Yeah. Now, was your education supported by the uh, GI Bill? Yes. Yes, it was. It was very good. And you said you made some really close friendships that you continued through uh, after the service. Yes, I still have them. I'm lucky with, I mean, the two of them are, where the three of us are still alive and still, we talk uh, quite frequently. And like I said, someday I'm going to go see one. I want the other one to come down too, but he's going blind, so he doesn't want to go. Yeah. Did you join any veterans organizations? No, oh, sure, the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Oh, there's the girl from. See. This girl here was, uh, I met Glenda. I went to the U. I went to the U. I went to the USO. Uh, and they said a pretty lady comes up. Who wants to go to a party? Huh. So, uh, the week before, a couple of my my buddies said they they went to uh, say who wants to go to a party, yeah. and they went to some movie stars' house. Oh. Yeah. So this pretty lady comes out says who wants to go to a party. I jumped up and forth. So they take us, and we end up going to a, a church social, which was nice. And I, yeah. and I met Barbara Larkin there. Uh -huh. And Barbara, I'm we're singing songs, and I, the minister was singing. Sing, and I said, oh, he doesn't have a very good voice. And she said, that's my father. Uh -huh. Yes, the following weekend, I was invited to the house for, for supper, and I took her to a movie, oh, yeah. and it was very nice. I, I got to show this to Gladys. And um, what did you do? Um, for a career after the war. After the war, I, I graduated from Bryant. I had my tax degree, and I got a job with the state of Connecticut as a tax auditor. But just before I started the job, my father approached me to come to work for him for much more money and become a laborer. And then later on, I became a partner in the business, and I'm still in the business. The flag and bomb and air scrap. Now it's recycling. It used to be a scrap yard, but now it's, oh, yeah. now it's a recycling company. Crap repressing. Uh, is that right? Is that local? In New Britain, yeah. Yeah. Uh, did your military uh, experiences influence thinking about war or the military in general? I always felt that, you know, you know people said, oh, like today people came up to me and say, oh, thank you for serving. I said, well, it wasn't very really good because that was the war I supposed to end of all wars. And it's, it's just so terrible that, that people. I mean, I mean, the Japanese and the Germans were so vicious, and I've met Japanese people since so after the war, because my wife and I travel all over the world. You won't find nicer people. I mean, yeah. well, the first when we came in contact, we were in Paris and on a nightclub tour. This Japanese fellow sitting next to we're talking. Well, please come to Japan, visit. We actually we went to Japan. Yeah. We thought we'd see him, you know, but he came and picked us up at the airport. He took us out. He was so nice. Luckily, yeah. his son came to America, and we we took we, we took not good care of him. But how could the people be so mean? And what they did in, 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 in Bataan and in, in China and wherever. Yeah. I mean, the Germans and, and the Japanese were just absolutely terrible, terrible people. And now you think, oh, any time I meet a German, it's because they were they were on the other front, and then. None of them were on the west. None of them were fighting against America. Yeah. But uh, look, the trouble is, people, your enemy becomes your friend. In the wars. I mean, that's why wars are so bad. We shouldn't have. To, they're just and now with all these young kids. I went to I went to Normandy. I went to the Philippines to the American cemeteries. I mean, if you don't, if you see those places, and in, and for better grace, the guy that could have been. My name could have been there too. All these fellows, 18, 20 years old, for what? To end the wars, but now there's more wars. Yeah. I think there will always be wars because, if, if, look, if a brother fights with brothers, how are you going to get countries not to fight with countries? Hey, you said you were in um, uh, veterans' organizations? Yeah, I'm in mean, uh, Jewish War Veterans, uh, uh, Jew the American, uh, not the American Legion. Uh, well, I think I basically, basically, I think that right now I just spoke to Jewish war vets. In fact, I'm, I'm vice commander of, of. 
you guys have uh, activities? Not much. No, we're we're a di uh, we're a dying organization. Yeah. Did you ever attend any reunions? Unfortunately, I often never had a reunion. The only uh, reunions I have is with my my close friends that we had. We gotten together three or four times. But as a unit, I always look for the unit the union, but they never had one. And how would you say that your service uh, and experiences uh, affected your life? Well, I think I, I, you know, I grew up in, in those two years. I mean, uh, I became, you know, because I could see when I started college, I was with some of the 18-year-old uh, kids. I was 20, 21. Uh, uh, I think it, it matures you. I, I don't think if we've had peace, I think service is a, a year service for everybody is not bad. First of all, discipline. And like I say, I, I told you, I, I wasn't too fond about my Officers, but but they taught us discipline. Maybe, maybe they were right. Maybe you know, you know, I'm, I'm not here to. They're not. They're not, not. They don't want any like. They don't want to be the most popular officer on, on, on the ship. They want you to be well trained and, and and maybe maybe to keep you busy. You don't have time to dwell. You don't have time to. Oh, I want to go home. Most of this war is no good. You know. Yeah. They, they, if you keep you busy, you don't have the time to bitch. Is the word that yeah. you know? Uh, you, 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 you can't you, you can't complain if you're busy working. You complain. I don't want to do this job, but you you concentrate a job. Not why am I here? Why 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 why, is this, why are we doing this? But of course, I could say we were. I'd say ninety percent of us that went in, we were happy to go in. We were worried we wouldn't go in. We thought my my, my best friends, you know, uh, some of my best friends got permission to. From their parents to leave uh, high school to go in, but my parents wouldn't let me do that. And I was af I was afraid I would never get. And like we're a concern that I, w I would be 4F. I mean that was the word 4F. You wouldn't get in. So right. I mean I I couldn't have gotten the ferment uh, because if I went to work for my father, because that was an essential industry. But never entered my mind. Now, is there anything else you want to add that we didn't cover at all? In the interview? I think you did a good job of covering it. That's if I think of something, I'll, it's too, it'll be too late tomorrow, right? <laughs> we could always do another I, I know. Tomorrow. That's nice of you, Jonathan. Well, that, that's it for the interview. Okay. Um, I appreciate uh, your time and your service.